So really quick, um, who hasn't seen my portfolio? Because I was just going to show some images. Anybody not seen it? A few people? Okay. All right, so I'll go through some of the images we're going to talk about today. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. So I'm originally from Italy, um, born in Florence, and um, came over here when I was young. Um, when I was a kid, I was just obsessed with art, and I loved doing portraits and all that stuff. Um, when I got to high school, I realized that, or I thought that you couldn't make money being an artist, so I just kind of dropped that. Um, and I went into film, and did that for a couple years. Um, I owned um, just like a wedding video business, um, and after a while, I just kind of got like bored of doing that. Um, just because I mainly wanted to be able to create everything um, in the final product. And with video, I couldn't really do that. But with photography, I was able to just create, you know, the ideas in my head, just create everything. Um, so basically, after high school, I went, I decided to do um, advertising. So I studied advertising for a little bit. And that's mainly where I got my... Um, like desire to, to do this type of photography, just like, I don't know what you call it, it's weird composite photography, ad photography. Um, so going to ad school um, was really cool and kind of a funny experience. Um, compositing kind of came natural to me. It was really a weird experience. I'll show you guys some of my first composites that I ever did. Um, they're kind of funny, but they're not actually too bad. I was... I just found them today for the first time. I was like, man, they're not that bad. Um, let's see, first composites. Okay, actually, maybe they're not that good, but anyway. So, these are the first composites I did at school. I realized that um, I could create what I was kind of imagining. So here's the, the first one. <laughs> it's all kind of ridiculous, but whatever. That was my first test in, you know, like cutting a person out and then um, using like blending modes on, a, on just like a plastic bag or whatever. And then I went to space and took some pictures. Just kidding. Um, and here was another one. This is kind of a test in shadowing. Now I look at them like, what the heck is that doing? But back then, you know, I'm like, oh, that's creative and weird. So. That was one of my other composites. Um, this is one we did for this uh, botanical gardens in Miami. And basically, I took um, pictures of flowers. So those are flowers right here. That red thing's a flower. That's a flower down there. And then all these different statues and put them together and created the shadow um, and all that. And these are totally ridiculous, but, you know, just for the fun of it. So and this is another one of my composites. So those are, like, the beginning um, Stages and I was, you know, that's when I kind of got into um, the thought of being able to, like, just create something out of nothing. You know, just take photos and just put them all together, um, just like that. So, in Miami, one other funny thing um, was that I learned about the pen tool. First of all, who does compositing here? Is there anybody that does some compositing? Okay, well, I like to use the pen tool. Um, do you have any preference to use any? Depends on the subject. Okay. If they have long hair, uh, if it's sharp edges, right. um, they can Right. So I learned about the pen tool, and that was revolutionary for me. So it kind of revolutionized my world. As soon as I found it, you cut out a subject, I just stuck to the pen tool. Some people don't like to use it, but that's my method of uh, choice. Um, one other thing that I thought was pretty funny was I took a couple of photography classes while I was there in Miami. And, um, the teacher, one of the courses was nude photography. And he, he like, it was really awkward because we had to take photos of our classmates naked. <laughs> it was really weird. So um, I went to him and I was like, you know, I don't really want to take nude photos of, like, people in my class, like, this is weird, or just new photos at all, so, um, you know, he let me do something else, like, I just took pictures of, like, guy with his shirt off, but um, he told me, he's like, you're never going to understand shadows if you don't take photos of nude people, you know, I was like, okay, whatever, um, 
And then <laughs> when we're sitting in class, it's super awkward. Like, basically, it's like seeing all you guys butt naked on the screen. I was just like, this is so awkward. Anyway, it was just funny. He told me that I would never understand shadows, and I won't be a good photographer if, if I didn't do new photography. But, like, whatever. Um, so anyway, after ad school, um, I came back home here to Salt Lake, and um, I started, I became obsessed with this, like, advertising photography, and I would study my favorite artists, um, and my favorite photographers, just day and night for, like, a whole year. I would stay up till 2 a.m. studying, you know, their styles, um, just where they placed images, and it was just, I was so into it. Um, for about a year, and I didn't really put my stuff out there. And then um, I had to get a job, made some money, and I saved up enough money to quit my job and just to go full time doing photography, which was, um, you know, amazing two thousand dollars, which like lasted me for a month. And then <laughs> after that, it kind of I spent it on other stuff. But um, so anyway, I I just went straight into it. I started doing wedding photos. Um, I'm going to show you some of the wedding photos that I've done in the past. And it's kind of interesting because it leads into my uh, style that I kind of have going on now. Um, okay, let's see. So I just hit the wedding market really hard. Um, I, I went to like every bridal shop and, and I was just trying to like market my style. And this is, I think people were confused because I made something like this for like a bride, you know, a composite. And they just didn't know what to think of it. They were like, it's really cool, but it's not romantic. And then, <laughs> and then this right here. <laughs> and they're like, wait, isn't she like escaping? I was like, oh, are you? I'm like, that's one way to look at it. That's okay, I guess. <laughs> and then, and this one, this is kind of like how, <laughs> <laughs> how we met. <laughs> so, and then, um, let's see, and this is just a, you know, normal, like, engagement shot, um, still composited, and then, it was actually for a bridal shop, um, and then, and then this is one I actually recently did for a couple. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I do get brides, I get really like interesting brides that want this. And I've had probably like at least ten requests. Like I want to beat the crap out of my fiance. <laughs> so like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> this is kind of funny. <clears throat> so anyway, um, so after. I started realizing, it's kind of funny, I started realizing that people weren't really, um, like, brides wanted more, like, candid stuff, not, like, this crazy whatever it is. And so I started just fading out of the wedding um, scene, and um, as I was fading out of the wedding scene and doing more of this, just kind of what I wanted to do, I started getting a lot more business from... Um, just random companies would call me. They saw my stuff like on the internet or um, just wherever. And I started getting more business that way. Um, so I faded out of weddings, or I phased out of weddings. Um, and that's when I started going full time doing um, like commercial work. Um, and it just, it's just random like how it happened. I mean, I started posting my stuff on um, different sites like Behance. Have you guys heard of Behance or like. Um, Pixoto, um, what's some others? I don't know, there's a bunch of them, but um, just from posting my work on Behance, I got, I just barely got commissioned to do um, Advanced Photoshop Magazine, the cover of Advanced Photoshop Magazine. So they called me, and um, it's gonna be next month's issue. And so just by posting my stuff like that, I started getting like a ton of people just checking it out. Um, one of the biggest ways, one of the things I wanna talk about is, um, using my, I guess, talent or whatever through um, like social media, working with Devin Graham, um, Lindsey Sterling, and some other people. Um, mm -hmm. They're really influential, but um, Devin Graham, for those of you who don't know, he's um, a YouTube filmmaker, and he gets millions of hits on his videos. Um, he has like 100 million 
views, 600,000 subscribers, something like that. So basically my, my idea was um, that I wanted to, I was just going to put my stuff out there and send emails to everybody that seemed influential in like the social media market, you know, and just see who responded back. So I sent a bunch of stuff to like, I, I just thought it was funny. I sent it to um, like Brad Pitt, I think, <laughs> stupid, you know. Like he's ever gonna check Facebook or whatever. But I started sending it to all these like actors and musicians and um, um, famous athletes, whatever you know, to, to and all these YouTube pages. And the first one to respond back was um, Devin Graham. So that's basically how I met Devin. He called me um, because he read my I sent him a Facebook message, like a bunch of emails, whatever. He finally called me and and he's like, yeah, I definitely want to do a shoot with you, you know? And I just offered it to him. I was like, let's just do a cool something, something. And so he, he told me right there, he's like, well, I actually have, it was, it was Thursday. And he's like, I actually have a, sh um, a shoot in Idaho on Saturday. Can you come? So I looked down at my calendar and I like, have all this stuff planned. And I was like, yeah, I'm totally cool with coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that was kind of the first time that we met. Um, and... So I kind of want to talk a little bit about the shoots that we went on and, um, and, and kind of the problems that we ran into um, in having to shoot and composite like everything super quick. Um, some of these shoots I literally had like 20 minutes to concept everything, to, to shoot every element, um, and then, you know, and then I was out of there and that's all the time I had. Um, so it's a Devin Graham shoot. Um, the first one was this photo right here. I hope that ain't it. I'm gonna pull this up. Maybe not. Okay. I'll pull up Photoshop here. Well, anyway, th this was the first um, shoot that we did. And when I showed up, so there's a few problems with this. Okay, this isn't pulling up. Whatever. Um, a few of the problems were that, you know, when, when you do a composite, at least when I do a composite, I like to go out to my location beforehand and shoot every possible angle, like everything that I can, um, <coughs> before I actually shoot the models. And, um, I like to shoot, usually I go the second day. So I go the first day and I see someplace I like and the lighting might be wrong. So I need to go the second day and shoot the background again. So one of the problems with this Devin Graham thing is that we didn't even have, I didn't even know what the background looked like. So he told me, you know, we have a shoot on Saturday. I was like, okay, let's do it, you know. And um, so I show up to the place. I'd never seen this place before. And it was just kind of like dull a little bit. I'm going to show you some of these pictures. Um, okay, let's see here. Same shot there. Okay. So the background... I mean, it's basically, you know, like, just bad lighting, like, just crap everywhere, and nothing in the background. I was like, what are we going to do? And the problem with this, though, was that I had one day to shoot the background and to shoot everybody there, and then I had to leave. Um, so, so that was, that was a few of the things. Um, something else was that, um, let's see here. I wanted to get a jet ski in the photo, and I had this idea, and I actually thought of this right when I showed up to the place. I was like, okay, I just had to think really quick. I was like, okay, we're going to have this guy flying off of the, you know, ramp, and Devin is going to have his camera on a jet ski, like, facing up, you know, towards the guy. So that was just my original idea. And, um, and when I got there, I was like, how am I going to shoot a jet ski? Like, I can't get in the water. I can't put lights, because how I shoot... If you see here, I'm gonna open up one of my other images. Um, I usually, to shoot all my subjects, I use like a three, at least um, three part lighting. So two is a room light and one is like a key light over here to the right. Um, and so my issue at the beginning was, how am I gonna shoot this in the water? Like it's not even gonna happen. Um, and then my other issue is how am I going to get a dude flying in the air? Like, let me see if I can pull the picture here. Um, no. Okay. Okay. 
so that's the final image. Um, in the beginning, that, that was similar to what I had in my mind. I was like, okay, I'm going to have dude flying up, whatever. But I was like, how am I going to shoot him? Um, you know, how am I going to shoot him from underneath? We had no props to, like, really jump off of. Um, we really didn't have anything. So, basically, my great idea was to have him, like, jump off of the tire like a maniac. And get the image that I needed. I was like, dude, I don't care what it takes, just jump as high as you can. Let's see here, this few others. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so he so he's jumping off the tire right here. <laughs> you know, and and at first I was just depressed, honestly, when I was taking the picture, I was like, this isn't gonna work. And um the lights, the reason they're low too is because there was a ton of wind, so I didn't want to like prop them up high and have everything fly everywhere. So it's just really a challenge, you know, this whole shoot. There's no, that's the one I actually used. Um, so it's kind of crazy. You think, like, you see the level that I'm shooting here, and then you see the level of the actual image, and it's like, it looks like he's a lot higher. So, anyway, that worked out pretty pretty good. Um, so, anyway, that, that was kind of the crazy issue there. Um, but anyway, this was actually the easiest of all the shoots that we did together because... Um, I don't know, I was able to shoot everything. I'll show you in a minute kind of all the layers that go into this image um, to show you what I actually shot and what actually, you know, I'll just show you now if this Photoshop will get us something like coming up. Okay, so let's see here. I just, I just want to show you kind of a, a before and an after. Um, let's see, where's the before? Okay, so this is a before shot. Don't ju oh, don't judge me. It looks really bad. So you kind of saw the, the elements that I um, put into that. Basically, I shot Devin on the jet ski, and then I shot the girl. Um, I can show you here the elements that I put into that. Um, so there's Devin, I shot him on the jet ski, and then I shot her, separate. Um, crazy thing is, you see that hair, like that's insane to try to get out, like especially with black. So I ran into just a bunch of problems with this, so it's kind of really annoying. So um, a couple things I want to talk about in this image. Um, just, I'm going to show you kind of all the layers that went into this. I mean, this is like almost a three gig file. There's like tons of layers over there, just for one image. Um, so one of the things, um, a lot of people talk about cutting out hair when you're compositing. You can use a lot of different methods to cut out some, something crazy like that, you know. Um, a lot of the time I shoot on, you know, I maybe get like a, a white or, depending on the color of hair, white or black, like um, just a piece of paper, you know, something big, poster card, and put it behind their hair. So I can easily take it out in, in uh, post, but um, in this case, it wasn't like that. Let me see if I can find the hair here. I'll show you what I did. So sometimes you have to create hair. You can't just Photoshop it out. Let's see here, where's the hair? No, that's the dude's hair. So you see up top, I added added some hair up there. No, it, I originally shot it. Um, where is it right there? I originally shot it and it looked like that. And it just looked weird. So I created some hair and put it back there. Um, and I'll kind of show you how I created it. <coughs> Let's see if this is the girl's hair down here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so... Um, the hair on the girl here, this is originally what it looked like. So originally that's what it was, and honestly that's the worst cutout I've ever done. But, but like, a different way, is if you can't cut the hair out, something I like to do is create the hair. Um, and see that, you just create different layers. And you can do that with Photoshop brushes, um, and that, that gets kind of complicated, but 
basically, um, you can download brushes that, you know, look like hair, and what you do is you use the clone stamp tool, um, and you can just clone in what she already had, you know, like, you clone, you um, copy from her hair, and then you can clone it behind um, and create, you know, it takes a little bit, but anyway, so that's something I did. Um, then over here, I want to show you the water and what, what was up with this. Um, okay, because this is kind of complicated. Let's see if I can find it here. There's like so many layers, it's ridiculous. And then name them amazing so I can find them all. Okay, just kidding. All right, anyway, I can show you a few of these layers so you can find the rest. But um, basically what I did with the, with the water, um, you guys saw the, the before image here. It's basically there was, um, pull up. It was running slow, okay. Basically that's what it was, that was the background. I shot that right there um, and actually added in this water over the jet ski. And then what I had to do was create this other, you know, just crazy wave right here. And what I did is I just took pictures of a wave runner, like, coming in front of me, just a bunch. So I was just there, I kind of guessed the, you know, the height, because I didn't really know. Um, I just had them come by and I took a bunch of pictures of just splashes um, and just copied those in, kind of cut them. And I did a few layers, just because some of the cutouts weren't too good, so you can see there. Um, using different Photoshop brushes, I created that, so. Anyway, moving on. That's, that's just kind of um, this image what we did first. So I want to talk a little bit more about um, some of the other shoots that we did um, because those get a little bit more complicated and I had little time to shoot again. Um, and so the next shoot he invited me on was um, the, I don't know if you guys have seen it, it's the unicycle picture. It's really here. Okay, there, so, so th this one was harder, so the first one wasn't too bad, I could figure out, you know, I could just problem solve pretty quickly. Um, this second one was pretty intense, so basically, I sh right when I showed up to the shoot, it was like 7 o'clock or something, the only time I could come, um, and the sun was going down, and the place that Devin picked for the background, see that's the other thing, he's picking the background, so I'm like, I have, you know, no say in in the background choosing. So he chose this background that was down in the city, it was shaded, everything looked flat, and I was like, this does not work, like I can't, you know, do anything with this image. So I was like, is there a parking garage where we can go up and, and take a shot or something? And he's like, yeah, I think so. So we went there, um, took us five, 10 minutes. Right when we got to the top, um, the sun was going down. I seriously had, I don't know, 20 minutes before the sun went down. So I get up to the top, and I walk around really quick, and I saw the sunset, and I was like, that's it. You know, I put the camera down, just do a bunch of shots, and I was like, cool, my background, I'm done, you know? And luckily it worked. Um, and then the other problem was shooting these um, guys at the same, at this level, because the thing is, when, you're, when I'm compositing, um, I always think about the height, because I always want to match up the height of everything, you know, or else it just looks weird. Um, even if, if you're shooting right here, you know, like a subject, and you shoot them right here, there's a huge difference. And it just looks, and even if you try to transform that or warp the person or whatever in Photoshop, it just, just doesn't come out right. So I always focus on, um, you know, shooting at the, the right level as the background and all the other elements. Um, so this is pretty tough because I had to shoot kind of at, you know, the level of, of his shoes down here. And, and it wasn't really working to get on the ground and to set up all the lights or whatever. So, so basically what I did here um, is we found a cool place to kind of prop these guys on. Yeah, and Devin is afraid of heights like more than anybody I've ever known. <laughs> so he, I didn't bring any pictures because I didn't want this to go like viral and people be like, Devin, you're a wuss, you know, but this isn't Devin, but he was, he used to see pictures, he was just like, like he couldn't get the pose, I was like, dude, just please just calm down for one second, like don't freak out, but anyway, yeah, it was kind of, kind of freaky because you can see the other side here, 
Um, so anyway, my lighting setup on this was kind of tricky because um, I wanted to get, so on the original image you saw that the sun is coming from behind, um, so I wanted a lot of like rim lighting on the person. Um, and so the thing was, I was thinking, how am I going to get rim lighting on this dude? I have my key light that's, that's you know, it's a little to the left of me, so it's just going to flash right on him. And then I just got to get the lights from behind. Um, so I had to like, I just put this light right there, you know, and that's, I guess, the best I could do. And then the other one, you see how there's some room light over there that's looking like the sun. I um, had to put my light over this thing. I don't even remember what I did, but I think I just, I propped it over the fence, like, four feet over the fence and just kind of shot um, in on him to get that rim light. Um, How'd you get the light going? They're like, they're pros. Well, this isn't Devin, but oh, okay. these, guys, these guys are pros. But actually Devin might go too, which is like ridiculous. Or I think, no, I had him put his arm on the, the fence there and he's just like balancing. But yeah, these guys could balance up there for a minute. This is pretty good. Um, anyway, and that image was kind of complicated. So that was another situation where I seriously had just no time at all to um, shoot the whole thing. And um, even compositing after the fact, you know, he has like a three, four day turnaround time. So our idea with these is that there were gonna be cover photos for his videos. Um, so I had to have them done two days before he posted the photo, which would be, you know, one day of editing or or whatever, it's just insane. I mean, if you can imagine, this is, I, I'll remember this my whole life because of the compositing, how annoying, but like all those spokes are there, I had to take out the background in each one, like every single one. And I tried so many things, I was like, maybe if I, you know, copy this tire over here, but things are all different angles and it didn't work. So I had to do it out of each one, you know, it was really annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I always remember that one. Um, so anyway, one thing about, a uh, really quick side note about, um, shooting, like, quickly, um, and I'm sure you guys have you know, a, a way of concepting quickly and, and doing your own thing, but, um, kind of how I went about shooting these images so quickly and, and, um, going all the way from, like, concepting to shooting every image, um, to, like, compositing was... Um, when I show up to the like set or wherever I'm at, I take a lot of shots of of one place. So if I see something that looks really nice, I what I do is I take panoramic. So I take three shots across, and I take each shot at three different exposure levels. Um, and it's kind of like a safety net for me, um, especially on these shoots. If I don't have any time to think about it, I just you know take three shots for panoramic at three different exposures. And then what I do is I take the same of the sky and of the ground. So I have tons of choices of that one image. And what I do is I go around and I shoot maybe five different angles doing the same exact thing. So I have, I don't know how many that is, but, you know, like a hundred pictures of the same, you know, image that's like slightly moved that way. But um, that's a way that I have been able to, you know, use, like, like get good backgrounds. Because if I just took one shot, it's, I would never got anything like this, you know. Um, so this is, I don't remember what shot that was, but... Anyway, that's just a quick side note. Um, okay, so I kind of want to move on and talk about some of the other um, things that we did. So through Devin, I was able to meet Lindsay Sterling. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with Lindsay, she's just a famous violinist. Um, and her album just barely got... Um, it came out like a few months ago and got like top 13 on iTunes. Um, it's just huge. So I was really excited to work with her. And the first shot that we did was was this. I'll show you in a second. But um, Devin, basically what he did is he hired, I mean, it's insane, like some of the stuff he comes up with, but he hired people from all over the U.S. to come with their Halo outfits. Like, if you guys aren't familiar with Halo, it's just like a video game. It's really popular, but... Um, people actually made their own Halo outfits, and I'll show you guys these outfits. And they came from all over the U.S. to do this, like, video slash photo shoot. So here's one that we did with Lindsay. Oops. <laughs> Crap, I didn't bring that up again. Oh, dang. There 
go. Okay. So, so this is her photo, her like her the photo shoot we did with her. Um, and this actually hasn't been released yet because it's been a, it's been a while. Like they went through some complications, but yeah. So these people actually made these suits. It's pretty insane. Out of plastic or something, they made the guns. So it was a huge deal. And so the fact that I got to go on that shoot, I was super excited. I was like, I'm gonna do my best job, you know. So. So that's the first one that we did for Lindsay. Um, and this one wasn't too bad, you know, I had a good, you know, an okay amount of time to shoot. Um, the second one that we shot of Lindsay, what's this, for another one of her uh, music videos. And this one actually went pretty viral. Um, she posted this on her Facebook page and um, it got, like, in the first day, 20,000 likes or something. It was insane. And then like a thousand comments, five, six hundred shares, just out of nowhere, just from posting this. So um, this went pretty big. This shoot, though, was the funniest of them all because I, so they were shooting this from 2, or let's see, from 10 p.m. until like 6 a.m. because they needed to be dark and cold and whatever. Um, and so I showed up to the shoot, and I thought I had plenty of time because she it was really last minute. She's like, oh, you can come to this if you want. And for me, I was like, oh, it's a good opportunity, so sure, I'll come. So I show up. Um, oh, you came to that. That was my assistant. She came. So we show up, and um, literally, like, we had 25 minutes to shoot absolutely everything. Because they were, it was a set of, a, like, a movie. They had so much stuff going on. They had lights um, set up. They had fog machines going. Um, you know, they had all these graves and graves on whatever. And we had 25 minutes to set up everything to shoot. So I shot a bunch of like backgrounds, like putting light everywhere. Um, and, and I was like, I'm just going out of my mind. Like, what do we do? Okay, I'm like, Shh, this one, okay, go here. So I shot everything. Um, and then she was about to go on set to, to play or whatever. And I had to shoot her and her band. Um, so that, that was pretty crazy. And I, I would say like 25 minutes to shoot everything in this image. Um, and it was pretty insane. And, and all the zombies, you know, and obviously. Took more to composite it, but um, so yeah, and the same thing that the the whole idea of shooting a lot of backgrounds if you don't have time, just and every I shot everything the same level, um, you know, so everything matched up. But yeah, just shooting as much as you can <laughs> if you have like no time at all, especially with compositing, just shoot everything, you know. And I shot different objects like like this right here was separate, like the grave over here was separate. Um, this is actually two images cut, you know, I shot two sides of the image, um, so anyway, that was that. Hey, so she was making a video for that? Yeah, yeah. Did they hire you to come make this, or did you... No, this was, this was me offering it, you know, to her, um, and, and some of these have, have resulted in, you know, being paid, but, um, the initial, like, offer was was me just showing up and and I was like yeah I'll whatever I'll offer it to you like just just see what happens um and from that you know as soon as she posted it like 20,000 people saw it you know um so that kind of up my um I don't know whatever Facebook likes like like everything this is really good um okay so now we're gonna go to the second half of the Halo shoot. So the first one was, was Lindsay. The second one was Devin, because Devin let Lindsay kind of use these dudes that he hired. Um, and this is probably the most complicated shot that I've ever done, and it's probably the biggest file. It's like a four gig PSD, but it's not even a PSD, it's PSB now, because it's, it's too big. Um, so I'll show, you, I'll show you some behind the scenes to this too. So this is like the craziest picture I've ever done, I think. Um, and I'll show you before, which was horrible. So sometimes when I compose that, I look at the before image, and it depresses me so bad that I don't even continue. I just delete the whole project right there. <laughs> like, like this, once you see it, you'll feel the same, I think. Let's see here. <laughs> Halo original. I was like, what is that, like a cartoon, like Teletubbies or something, like colors? <laughs> it's, like, it's like none of the colors match up, like <coughs> everything's just too dark, like what the heck? And <laughs> so when I put all that together, I really was depressed and 
I did not want to finish this. So that's why I spent so much time on this image. Um, I mean, I told people how long I spend on each image. You know, this one was maybe 15 hours, which people are like, oh, that's not long at all. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how much time people usually spend, but for me, that was a crap load of time. But, um, so anyway, on this image, um, just a bunch of, I mean, so some of this stuff is really hard. It was really detailed. Like, you see over here, bullets, bullet shells coming out. I just want to be really detailed. There's a bunch of shrapnel. Shrapnel, shrapnel, and there's the gun fire that I had to create over here. Oops. Do you paint those? Or yeah. I use brushes. I, I create that. Like, this is, um, I did a few brush strokes underneath. I did kind of an orange, then I make the brush a little bit smaller um, and do a lighter orange brush a little bit smaller and do, like, a really light, like, white or something, you know, so that creates that sort of look. Um <clears throat> Another thing that makes an image pop out a lot that I've noticed um, after doing this a bunch is, is you have to look at the reflections. Um, you have to look at like the light, like where it's, <clears throat> like it's going to shine and everything. Um, so here I'm manually creating the light that's going on these guys, like all, all over here. Like you see the rim light on Devin, it's more yellow. Right here, this dude's like... Um, yellow, you know, like there's fire over here, over here. <clears throat> so you gotta create all that, or else it just looks like not too good. And then, and then you gotta take into consideration also, um, like where the fire is closest, it's gonna be more intense. So like right there, it's like a lot more intense than it is like over here. You know, you gotta take a lot of stuff into consideration. So I've, I don't know, it's, <clears throat> in learning this stuff, I was just, um, kind of playing around with the light, or I'm always looking at shadows, like how they really fall on people in real life, or um, I'm looking at how light falls on people, you know, like, <clears throat> the light's over here, it's going to light up this side, and, you know, it's going to be dark on this side or whatever, and there's still going to be some orange over in this area. Um, so anyway, that's one thing. And then also with the flame here, um, this is actually a stock image of an explosion, like probably the little circle right in there is, and then the rest I created with Photoshop brushes. You can just get smoke brushes and um, do like the clone stamp or whatever and kind of clone in the edges there so it looks more real. And I wanted to make it look like he was just coming across this way so I created this little um, tail over here. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is just a really complicated image. Um, I'll show you some behind the scenes to this, kind of my lighting setup. Um, oh, there's only one, awesome. Is there audio on here? It's going to be loud. Um, no. Okay, that's fine. Well. <laughs> what? Yeah. He's using all the two gigs of RAM. Okay, guys, we're taking a break. Everybody, go home and come back. And we're, I'm just kidding. No, that should be good. I'll, I'll just show you some other stuff in the meantime. Um, let's see. Okay. Awesome. All right, so this is just, so we found this place, like, it was really sunny out, and I like shooting um, in shade because a lot of time I shoot with speed lights on location um, just because it's really convenient, super easy. Um, I have two speed lights for the, the rim lights because they're less powerful. And then I have like a, a strobe, like a studio strobe in the front right here. You see a big softbox um, hooked to like a portable battery pack or whatever. Um, and I'm always putting that like at, what is that, like 45 degree angle or whatever for the subject. Um, and then I just use umbrellas. And so I like to shoot in the shade because my lights... Um, Sometimes, depending on what lights I bring, they won't overpower the sun like the speed lights won't, you know, individually. Um, so, I, this is the only place you can. You're going to be down like this, like you're, you're about to turn and shoot. Okay. You know, so okay. You maybe have your gun up. Yeah. Uh, scoot, time it back. Okay. Nice. Hold it with the other hand. Uh, yeah, can you? 
Can you um switch hands? Oh, oh. switch hands. Got it. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. good. So, so good, good. Well, nice. Hold it. it too. So basically, um, and the reason why I'm not, I usually shoot on a tripod. Um, the reason why I didn't shoot on a tripod here is because the, the background was so crazy. Um, there was rocks everywhere, and it was just insane. So I had to shoot. Every, I couldn't shoot anything on a tripod because there's no place to like put a tripod. So I had to shoot it standing up. Um, so that's why I was just shooting like that, you know, handheld, um, trying to keep the, you know, the angle like correct and straight on. Um, and I was trying different poses, but anyway, that's my lighting setup. And usually, like, if you don't know what background you're gonna shoot, especially me, I usually shoot, just do some rim light and then use one key light. Um, and and that's kind of my lighting setup, unless I know the background and then I can shoot the exact, you know, use the exact lighting that I need. Um, for everything. Oops, okay. All right. So I don't know, is there any questions up to now? I'm just kind of going. Um, just really quickly, another one of uh, Devin's shoots here that we did. It's Assassin's Creed. Um, this is for another video that he did. Um, and kind of what goes into this is the American flag, I had to Photoshop out all the stars and create, you know, the original 13 colonies. <laughs> are you creating or photographing all this yourself, or are you cutting from other sources? No, I'm um, photographing everything myself. I used to take from stock images, but um, I just realized it's safer to shoot your own stuff, because then you have the rights to everything. Um, so yeah, I shot all these rocks. I mean, this is actually four rocks, four different rocks total. And I uh, multiplied it like 10 million times. <laughs> um, there's like a cannonball right here, some fire going on. I mean, there's really small details that I focus on. You gotta focus on the shadows. Um, that's another really tough thing is, is shadows in grass. That's probably one of the hardest things because you gotta create the shadow. But I mean, shadows in grass aren't really like, like a solid stripe, you know? Like, if you look at a shadow in the grass, there's some grass that sticks out, so there's like little little um, pieces of grass that are lit up in the middle of this whole shadow. So I mean, as you, you can see here, I kind of lightened up. There's some, you know, you can see it's kind of jagged a little bit, um, even over here, um, and same with here. So it's not gonna be like a solid stripe. Um, and yeah, like I said, this is just a ton of, just work, and, and what I did here is I wanted to create, like, I created a blur um, on some of these rocks, made them a little bit bigger so it makes it look like it's coming towards you. Um, puts a little bit of red in there underneath all that, like it was fire or whatever. Um, so that's, that's that image. Um, let's see, and here is, okay, and here, here's more behind the scenes that I can show you of our, um, this is another shoot that we did. Okay, so so this is a real kind of problem originally because um, oh, I wonder if I have the image on here. Hold up. Okay. Camera? As I said, um, the Canon Mark II. Um, 24 to 105. L series, just the pack. I usually shoot with that because with compositing, I don't need, you know, I mean, I'm doing, I'm stitching everything together anyway, so. Okay, so, here, so here's this image that we shot. And um, so I had kind of a better idea. So, so the funny thing was, this is in Lake Powell, like six hours away, and, and I had to be back by, I think it was the evening or something, so I drove to Lake Powell, had like three hours to shoot, and I came back, and the, the boat ride to where we were at was an hour. So it was just insane trying to get everything done. And I had this idea in my head. I was like, I want to, you know, have him coming on the boat across and, you know, have this guy being thrown up in the air by this huge blob. So that was kind of my idea. Um, and it actually happened how I imagined it. But this is one thing, um, kind of a quick side note, that I, um, that's kind of advanced me a lot more in my compositing and just how I create images, is I don't really think of how I'm gonna create the image, I just think of the image, you know? I think of the final product and I think of sometimes the craziest stuff. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, but 
um, then what I do is I, you know, that forces me, that pushes me to, to create stuff that I never thought I could do. You know, if you thought of like, how are you gonna get a dude flying up in the air um, with lights around him, you know? I mean, if you look at that, I mean, some of you might think, like, have some ideas of how to do that, but like, we couldn't launch him off the blob and take the picture because we didn't have light, like, where am I gonna get the lighting from, you know? Um, and and even, even the boat here, how am I gonna set lighting up around, around this whole thing? So let me just show you really quick kind of what I, what I did here. Um, Shoot. Oh man, I didn't get pictures of it. Anyway, okay, well, I, I can just show you. Whoa, it's loud. That's cool. This can I, how do I turn down here? There. So you see I have a light right here, that's my speed light, then I have my um, other softbox right there. I'm not sure, probably, because I've done that before. Um, I don't know. Maybe that dude, right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Maybe. <laughs> so and here, here's another um, scene that I tried that didn't make it, but I just brought. Since I couldn't bring all the lights, I just used the sun as a backlight, and then. Uh, this is kind of my uh, key light. So anyways, you see, I'm not using a tripod. It's just kind of ridiculous because i got to match up everything. Um, one Nikon, one Canon. I use uh, radio poppers to, like, sync all them. And then this, this is the other scene. This is, like, getting the small um, waves here and all, all that here. Like, he didn't even notice. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are going to see So, and that was a pretty crazy shoot. One guy broke his collarbone. Um, an hour away from everything. Yeah. An hour away from everything. Well, more, it was two hours away from the hospital, then an hour to the boat. So three hours away, and he broke his collarbone because um, they were jumping on the blob, and and he was in the middle. So they just had this great idea to put three people on to shoot people off further, you know. So one dude was in the middle, and they came down and just snapped his collarbone. He came out, and it was just like, ugh, yeah. Um, a girl, she flipped um, in the air, and she landed on her back from like 30, 40 feet up and got like a collapsed lung or something. Devin broke his toe. Um, and something else. Oh, the girl got like a concussion, passed out or something. It's just best it's ever. yeah, best photo shoot ever. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that's for those uh, composites there. Um, and one thing that Jeremy wanted me to bring, but I couldn't bring it was. I have a mobile uh, like bus, or I have a bus that's like a mobile studio slash office that I bring around. Um, it's good for advertising, and I just wanted something, you know, I wanted to market online, but I also wanted to um, just constantly be in people's minds, you know, like on the street. So when they come home from work, they can see the, the bus, or like at big events, um, they can see the bus. So let me show you the before and after of this thing. Yeah. So that's like a senior citizen. Yes, yeah, senior citizen. <laughs> this is Pimp My Ride right here. So senior citizen center inside of this thing. Right there. It's just really nasty, you know, it has the seats and everything, just the classic. So it's all white and yeah, smells just horrible. Wheel wheelchair lift. So 
the interior goes from that to to that. So, um, rap star did the rap in Salt Lake. Pretty cheap. Um, normally would it cost like five thousand? They did it for like half price, twenty five hundred. They're really good, really professional. And and what I do is I edit in here. Um, air conditioning, everything is nice, and people come by and see the outside of the bus. Well, I edit my house too, but yeah, that's my uh, mobile office. <laughs> yeah, I don't keep everything in there. Yeah, well, I, I take everything out at night, so. Um, in the back, escape from ordinary photography, so. I actually don't do weddings anymore, so I gotta cancel that out, but. Well, this is the thing. I think at first I thought, like, oh, it's, people are gonna, tons of people are gonna call from this, you know? Um, but what I realize is people, I'm, I'm the first thought, like, like business people or whatever they have, I'm like their first thought because this huge van is in the middle of downtown, you know, parked in front of an ad agency for weeks. Like, what is this dude doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, I, funny, actually, I parked in front of this ad agency for like, like three, four days, you know, and, and I finally got a, to meet up with them. Um, <laughs> and like got, got to t talk with them and they were super impressed and they're like is that your bus out there? I was like yeah it is I've been waiting waiting for you guys <laughs> funny thing was I was parked I was parked in the back parking lot so nobody actually saw it before like one person saw it and I was like crap I was wasting all my time but it's kind of funny um anyway so there's that um and I guess one last thing before I close here I was gonna Oh, and online, I actually have, I just posted the first video today. It's um, a time lapse of how I created um, one of my images. And it shows you, a lot of people ask me about like the surreal effect and like how it looks painted or cartoon or whatever, you know. Um, and this kind of, I'm coming out with tutorials because um, a lot of people have been asking, but um, this kind of shows, you know, a time lapse of just of how I do, you know, my editing or whatever. I'll show you just a clip. You can see it online. Well, this, this is actually more like conceptual, but they're actually using it for their engagement photo. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Bling. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty insane. So then, um, you know, it just goes through. I mean, it's kind of long. This is six minutes. I mean, four and a half hours down to six minutes, you know, so... It's kind of crazy. It creates some sparks there and everything. So, anyway, yeah. So that's on YouTube. Um, I'll be uploading more stuff. Um, anyway, yeah. I'm I'm pretty much done with you know what I had. So if you guys have any questions or open up for whoever. Yeah. Not really, like I shoot um, do it just like that on location and then just cut people out with a pen tool. Um, Cause I don't really need a green screen. I mean, it would be faster, yeah, nicer, but it, to me it's about the same amount of time setting up a green screen and cutting a person out. So I just shoot on location, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, that's a good question. Like, 
now I'm finishing every project that I that I um, start. Maybe a year ago, you know, I'd have occasional like two or three that were just really bad. I'd finish the whole thing, you know, ten hours of work, and I'd delete it, like because it just made me sick. I was like, oh, delete. Um, well, well, this is the thing, when I, I realize now that if I shoot everything correctly, then, then the image will come out good. Um, but in the past, like, the problems that I had, actually one image that I recently had a problem with, or maybe like three, or like four months ago or something, um, I shot everything, it was just a last minute shoot, and I was using the, the sunlight, it was actually right kind of above his head over to the side. And I used the sunlight as one of my lights, but the thing is my um, speed lights weren't able to, you know, match that for the rim light. So the image just didn't look good. Um, so, I mean, that's why I say, like, if, if I shoot something correctly, like, at the same level, um, you know, with good lighting, then it usually comes out good. Because you, you can move things around so much that if this position doesn't work, they move it out around over here. Uh, one problem I ran into with the, the halo, uh, the reason why it looks so bad, like, in the before is because I seriously, I mashed probably 12 images for the background. Um, I mean, if you see this thing, it's like 18,000 by like 6,000 pixels or something. It's insane. Um, so the problem with that is, see, it doesn't look like they match up too well. Like his, his feed and all that. Um, maybe some of the other dudes do, but so for that one, I, I just had to create a lot of effects to kind of mask, you know, I masked his feet over here, um, and, and so then it looks better, but, you know, if you shoot everything right, then it, the image will come out good. Have you ever tried, um, having a background, because I, I know, and it's still some composite artists, they, um, they'll shoot an HDR image, and then, and then they'll edit that, and then they'll match the people with the background. Have you ever tried that method, instead of just throwing everything together? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, this is definitely... This was on just just the Devon shoots and the Lindsey Sterling shoots. Um, a lot of the other stuff, it it like matches like I plan it. Um, let's see here. I mean, even let's see some of these. Yeah, oh, there you are. <laughs> That's him right there. I actually shot him. That's funny. Um, so yeah, like on a lot of these, like this one, I just match up the lighting. Um, take the background shot first and then match the lighting from behind, you know. So over here, like, I didn't do too much rim light, you know, because there's not much coming from over here, but over here it's, like, really powerful. So. Do you build up, like, a background library just go anywhere, just, oh, that looks cool. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I usually shoot, um, I just go out and shoot a ton of backgrounds. But the funny thing is, I always change what I want, so I shoot a bunch of clouds, then I put them somewhere in my library and I can't ever find them, so I have to go out and shoot everything again, like, every time. <laughs> so, like, I have a shoot coming up. I, I went to Hill Air Force Base and took a bunch of shots um, of, like, planes and, um, like, this, this thing right here, this big truck. Um, shot that. I shot a bunch of helicopters, and I have a project where I need a helicopter, and... I'm like, where did I put those? Like, it took me so long, like 10 hours to go out there and like shoot everything, but whatever. So sometimes I take from existing images <laughs> to all use this and all like, what? Ta oh, I never even used Lightroom, I don't know how to, how do you stay organized? How to manage that, how do I stay organized? With, um, well I do have, I mean I have an external hard drive where I keep, you know, backgrounds um, that I really like, you know. So things like birds, you know, I use occasionally. So I have a folder with birds. Um, but yeah, usually it's just one folder called backgrounds. This is a funny thing. I switch it out so often because my style keeps changing. And I think, you know, I want better clouds. So I delete the old clouds. and So I have this folder that says backgrounds, but it's empty most of the time, which is like <laughs> pointless. So. Have you tried any other tools for uh, cutting out besides that tool? Like programs? Like the what? Oh, no, I haven't. Just other tools in Photoshop, um, quick selection tool. But for some reason, I don't like how it cuts out the image 
Um, one thing that I, that I learned um, when cutting down an image, especially with the pen tool, um, is, is to kind of, I wonder if I can show you here, kind of overlap. Um, this guy, this is going to freeze up on me here. I don't know if I can explain it showing this, but um, so I like to overlap. So let's say let's say the arm, you know, here's the arm. I don't cut on the outside. I cut like on the inside. So I cut some of her arm off, um, you know. So I'm cutting on the inside like this, and that's what I do. Because some of the other tools, for some reason, they don't they don't let me do that. Um, well, a lot of time there's um, and I don't know why this happens, but say it again. Yeah, yeah, the color bleed, there's some color bleed, there's like these, um, just like halos sometimes, like green, blue, red halos that happen. And see, when I cut it out sharp, I mean, I usually do like a um, 0.5 feather or one on the feather. Um, and see, there's no bleed from the original image over here. Um, and what that lets me do is, that lets me mask out, I'm having a hard time with this here, okay. What that allows me to do is allows me to mask out kind of like um, the image here, and I can paint on some of the reflection from the sun, you know, without having any of that original color in there. So, any other questions? Uh, if you're gonna, if you're starting from nothing, uh, what what would be uh, kind of maybe your, your first five things you'd say about the to, to get equipment. Um, camera. Just <laughs> That's one. <laughs> just, just because I, I, have, I have a lot of people, they, they ask me, and I, I just want to see if we're kind of the first thing. Yeah, I no, I mean, so they want to get started. I mean, the main thing, obviously, the camera, but then, like, um, just. I mean, I first started with uh, speed lights, and you can you can do it with speed lights. You know, that's fine. You don't have to buy like, the super expensive strobes. Um, you know, speed lights, the umbrellas, and then just something to trigger them. But I would say get good speed lights because like the um, like the Canon 580, 580s are good. Um, but some my friend he just keeps going through the same thing. I'm like, dude, just ask me, and I'll tell you like what you need. He keeps finding deals online like Amazon, like these really cheap flashes. <laughs> You know, I was like, dude, just do it, just get it, and just see how it works. And so he gets it and never works, you know. It's like you can't fire it off um, when it's, you know, off camera or whatever. So I would just say, yeah, speed lights, I guess, just whatever, and then a camera. <laughs> Something to trigger it. Yeah. Do you find that your style changes with advancement in Photoshop? Like, do you have no Not, not really, I don't think. Um, I mean, the only thing I really like using in the new ones is the spot healing brush. Um, I don't even know what content where it does yet. But I, uh, I use, like... <laughs> see, I, I've been using 5.5, uh, so like I'm a, I just barely downloaded CS6. Um, but yeah, maybe that... I mean, I use CS4 occasionally because it's faster on my computer. <laughs> so I have an older Mac, so I use CS4. How much um, do you have? Uh, eight gigs. I mean, it, it's pretty good, but I'm, I got mine like four years ago, so I just need an upgrade, but I mean, it goes pretty fast. Did you have a question before? What's yeah. What's your favorite attack and positive that you've done? Which one's kind of the best for you? I think, I think the, the Halo one, this one right here, it's my... Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, the one I was seriously gonna trash, and I'm glad I didn't. Because the, the only reason I didn't trash it is because in the past I've had really crappy images to start off with, and I made them super cool. So I was like, let's just hope that this will be cool. So I just finished it and I liked it. Um, yeah, but I think this one, because it has a lot of different elements, and I had a lot of time to put detail, like so much shrapnel. Like you see, there's bullet shells over here from this guy, the gunfire, smoke. Um, all the fire here, reflections. This is probably my favorite. Oh, and then this is fun up here. Some sort of boosters with the lens flare. Has a video with this come out yet? Um, no, it's supposed to come out this week, so like maybe tomorrow. I thought it was going to come out today, but probably tomorrow.
So one thing, totally random, but about Facebook is, I don't know, you guys probably heard, but they have, have something now where it's like, if you post your photos on your own page, um, or any post that you have on your page, it won't show, show up on other people's like, home page as much as it did before. Before it was like 30%, I don't know if somebody can correct me, but it's like it showed 30% of your friends, and now it shows up to like less than 10%. So we went from, and that, that was just like a couple weeks ago, so it's like free. Like this photo is my favorite one. Um, on the first one, the, the human slingshot got like 1,500 likes right away, you know, and, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. This one got like 250, you know, and I had way more friends on Facebook. He does too, and it just didn't do anything. So, um, I, I tried it a few times. It's like 15 bucks, right? 10 or 15 dollars to have people see it. I don't know. I mean, Facebook for me is like, I guess if you want more likes, but. I've been noticing, I'm not sure how much, like, business you get from Facebook. Like, I get some good deals, but, you know, I don't know if it's worth it. So, anyway, I'll just side note. But. Question uh, from the people that are watching online. They want to know about when you're pre-visualizing what you're doing. Are you sketching it out, or are you just keeping it all in your head? How are you approaching that? Um, some of these I sketch out, and it helps to sketch out. This one I didn't sketch at all. I just kind of figure in my mind. Um you know, a bunch of dudes exploding. It's just a huge war. So I'm going to have guys close up to the camera shooting, you know. Um, a lot of the other images, though, I do sketch out. Like the, the human slingshot one, um, I, you know, I just do quick sketches of, of what I want. But it mostly comes out in the post-processing, like the image that I like, so. For each of these people, do you photograph them pretty much full size? or do you mm -hmm. say, Oh, he's going to be small in the background. Uh, well, well, I shoot, um, I mean, you can shoot, hor a lot of time I shoot horizontal if they're really far back, like like the dude here, he's not going to be too big, so I just shot him horizontal, but a lot of the other images I shoot uh, vertical because that just gives me a lot more, you know, quality to work with. Um, something like this, I probably shot him a little bit lower, you know, and then just cropped him. Um, this guy, you know, I shot him about a little bit smaller and I made him bigger. Um, the rest of these guys, I made a tiny bit smaller. So yeah, everything's pretty much full size, everything's in the frame for the most part. Unless if I know that I want this guy on the edge, which I knew that. I was like, I didn't have this guy like calling people in so I didn't need to shoot full body or whatever. So you're scaling now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like um, creating perspective. Before I just do kind of like a flat image, everybody's the same size, you know. But, um, you know, I've, in these, you know, I, I just like the perspective, like closer up, the dude's far, there's a little dude up here. Um, and there's so much going on in this image. This rocket launcher here, there's all this smoke and he's firing a rocket over this dude. This guy over here is shooting bullets. Um, dude up here is shooting down here. There's just so much going on. Hmm? Yeah, very realistic. <laughs> So, any other questions? Yeah. Um, what are we doing now? My next, well, I have a couple. Um, the one I'm working on now, right now is Advanced Photoshop um, magazine. Cover for that. Um, they just want some girl busting through glass with guns. So, I don't know. Um, so that's what I'm working on. And then um, they just. We are we already shot it. They just had to pick the image, and so I'm, I start editing tomorrow probably. Um, next one, I'm obsessed with James Bond, so I was seriously thinking about like the coolest project ever to do. Like I don't know if it's gonna happen in the future, like a workshop where where you go to like a fancy hotel um, with with a choice of cars, like really fancy cars, and a choice of a bunch of guns, and just like three day workshop going through like this crazy spy series, um, creating, creating a story out of it, um, putting it into a book, something like that. That's, that's kind of, you know, down the road, but, um, and then, let's see, I have something else going on. Oh, if you guys have ever heard of flern.com, has anybody heard of them? Um, I'm making, uh, pro tutorials for them, so it'll be up soon or whatever, so, and that's pretty much it for now. 
<laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, all this stuff was kind of crazy because, you know, it's in Idaho and it's over here and there. Um, but yeah, I definitely need assistance. I just have you just add me on Facebook and, you know, send me a message. And uh, I'm going to use a couple of these guys, you know, we did some shoots or whatever. So, yeah. You're just so low key about the cover of this magazine, isn't it? Oh no, it's huge. I just don't want to be like cover the magazine. No, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, they get like three million hits or three million views a month or something like that. So, I mean, yeah, I I posted my work on um they found out Behance.net, and I just posted my portfolio of like the spy series. Originally, they wanted me to create um a tutorial for the. Let's see if I can find the image here. It's it's. One of these spy images. No, that's not it. This one right here. Um, they saw that and they loved that and they wanted me to create a tutorial on how I did this. And then it turned from that into why don't we just have to make the cover of the magazine? So they commissioned me to do the cover. Um, yeah, lucky for me, it was good. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I just, you know, you never know. Like, the last minute they could probably be like, Oh, we're using different covers, so that's why I'm like low-key about it. But I mean, they did commission me to do the cover, so I'm hoping that means what it means. Is that what you Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's 17, but... She's 17. No, she's actually... She's just 13, yeah. No, she's pretty big. She's like an international model and stuff, and I caught her kind of before all that. And this dude's another model, too, from Utah. So th this is, image was actually kind of crazy because um, I shot them on the ground and, and they, were, they were laying on the ground like this and my, my angle was like this and I just shot them and I was like, let's hope that works. Um, a lot of my shoots, like they're planned but it's like just stuff goes wrong, we don't have time. This is another one where I had like two seconds to shoot the dude. I was like, get on the ground, Psh, perfect. And, and then the, the background um, was actually... I, I spent two days or three days shooting backgrounds, going all over downtown, and I couldn't find what I needed. Like, I was like, how am I going to make, you know, a, I was shooting buildings that were straight like this. I was like, how am I going to shoot a building and, and make it tip on its side and, and make it look good? Because you have to shoot two angles, you know what I mean? Like, like this one, and then you got to shoot like the, the 3D sort of angle. Um, so anyway, I was going to my car. It was the last day of the shoot, you know, after three days. And I just had to stop. Maybe I should just take a picture of that glass over there. So I, I usually don't zoom in to take pictures, you know, because it, it gets a little bit blurry around the edges, whatever. But I was like, whatever. I zoomed in and I took a picture of this, like, glass, and that's what I ended up using. Not even on my tripod, nothing. I was like, I can't. <laughs> no worked out good, so. But yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, I imagine as you go through work on Negative feedback? Especially like in like F stocks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They'll they'll show somebody's like some some people will come out. Yeah. Hey, it looks like your reflection is way off right here. Yeah. Just a bunch of pixel people. Yeah. A few times a few times I had to like suck on my pride and be like, You're right. I have I didn't edit that out. But sometimes like you're an idiot. Like Like, most of the comments are just so stupid. <clears throat> I don't even respond to them. Like, what, what did they say? I was like, Josh, what's your photography, right? I'm a photographer. They're like, this is not photography, like, screaming. Like, what is this? It's not photography? Somebody tell me what this is. You know? And they're like, this is... <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. This is so unrealistic, I got. Like, oh, and then one guy's like, this is so Photoshopped, like, negative. <laughs> I know. So, some I found is kind of funny. Some of my friends respond to those people and they just say whatever. I, I don't really respond. But my friends get so pissed, they just go on there. Like, one today, my friend called me and he, I just saw his comment. It was hilarious. Some girl was like, um, 
And I'm fine with comments, you know, I don't care what people can say whatever, but she was like, um, are you, something about going to school, like, like, did you, are you going to school right now to become a photographer? You know? And I was like, please. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, freaked out. Like, of course, like, you're on his business page. Like, what do you think? I don't know, it's just funny. <laughs> I don't really respond, though. I just, I laugh. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah, I've had a few people tell me that. Like, that's kind of why I want to make, I want to do this James Bond, like, series, like a new one, and do sort of like a comic book, you know, but put it into a book, sort of, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, it's interesting. So... Any other comments? No? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm cool with it. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll kill you. <laughs> no other questions? You good? earlier what's the date on the on December is it t the 12th 11th. 11th. 11th so second Tuesday next <clears throat> next month 7 o'clock same thing uh, and we're gonna have Harley in here talking about or showing us how he did some DIY um, high-speed how, how would you even explain high -speed photography, so using you know, laser and sound activated he's gonna show us how he's kind of MacGyvered together some stuff to do that so it'll be a live demonstration and you know, obviously interactive, so it, it's pretty cool. He first did it at Photo Camp in 2010, so he's refined it a little bit and gonna show us how it's done. So, uh, any questions at all, any comments? Anybody have any, uh, we don't have anything slated yet for 2013, so if, again, if you guys have any ideas about something that you'd like to see, um, you know, something like this is outstanding. So, um, if you have friends uh, that, or, or you yourself has something to contribute, email either one of us, contact us either way on Facebook or whatever, um, because it, it just benefits everybody. So, um, okay, this is for, you're going to get your tickets out. Uh, this is for one year, uh, and this is the full, full uh, pro membership, so. Business. Business, thank you. Business membership. Okay, ready? Below 300, please. <laughs> I, I'm, just because of Cliff, I'm really moving this around here. Dig deep. Dig deep. If it's on the second row, there's something weird. All right, ready? <laughs> Four, two, six. I'd like to do that part. Three, one, seven. Oh, give it to somebody else. Oh, oh, you got to no. be kidding me. <laughs> Mark one last time. So. I rest my hands. <laughs> so next time when you come, trade tickets with Mark. Yeah. All right, you pick one out. That way we know somebody else. Is. <laughs> All right, ready? Four, two, six, three, three, zero. Yeah. <laughs> come on up. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna. What, what, what's it for your, uh, oh, well, you better check and see if it's my husband or my brother or my. I have a football field. Oh, it's up to you. Oh, it's fine. 
if you guys have time, I mean, grab a snack on your way out. If you have time to stack up your chair and put it against that wall, that would really help. Uh, and hang out and talk, whatever you guys want. We're over here until late. Dude, what's up? Thanks for coming. What's that? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Great. Oh, thank you. Oh, big thumbs on you. Oh, nice to meet you.